What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Welcome to Stacking Your Team, a show for entrepreneurs who are ready to step into the CEO role of their business by attracting and retaining key talent. Hey there, I'm Natalie Ekdahl, host of the Biz Chicks podcast. Our clients and community are rapidly expanding their businesses and need support as they stack their teams. Through on-air coaching calls, training episodes, and interviews, we will share insight on how to hire, fire, and inspire team members who will contribute to the long-term success of your business. Your incredible host, Shelley Warren, leverages her background growing and leading teams in multiple organizations, including a Fortune 50 corporation. Whether you are hiring for the first time or expanding your team locally or virtually, join us each week so we can set you and your team up for success. So are you ready to stack your team? Here's Shelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. If you've been tuning in each Tuesday, I want to thank you for your support, your ratings, reviews, and of course, your comments that you leave in the social media posts that coincide with each episode. I love the encouragement and the conversations that we get into, keeping the topic alive as everyone strives to lead their team well. So here's what's on tap for you today. Well, it's one of those topics that leaders find very frustrating, and I hear about a lot during strategy sessions and mastermind discussions with our clients. Yes, it's cell phones, social media, and email, those three aspects of our workplace and our lives that can often lead to performance issues and loss of brand trust in the eyes of our clients and customers. And hey, it's not just team members who are impacting this culture. This can be a problem across every level of your organization. So today we'll be answering some important questions such as, do I need a cell phone policy for my team? And can I take their cell phone away from them? Should my team be connecting with clients and customers on social media? Should I be defending myself and my brand with bad online reviews or comments And what should I do with team members who misrepresent our brand on email? These are just a few of the questions that I know can trip you up as a leader. And frankly, this can be uncomfortable because these are the kinds of decisions that are necessary to create structure, guidelines, and boundaries that form the foundation of how you'll run your business. Geez, I wish these were more instinctive for everyone but they're not. So are you ready to dive into these questions today and learn more about what the basics of your policies really should cover? All right, let's do it. Hey, raise your hand if you have spent a ridiculous amount of time being frustrated by your team over these behaviors at work. Mm Mm-hmm, I see you. Some of you have lost momentum, lost respect, lost trust, and even lost customers because of overuse or misuse of cell phones, social media, and email. Some of you have been the culprit, 
And how many of you have rolled your eyes and shook your head in judgment of people tethered to their phones when they were supposed to be noticing you in line or at the counter or in front of you at a green light? I could go on and on. Cell phones, social media, and email are now our way of life, both on the job and off. As leaders, it's our job to set up a few guardrails along the way to keep our business and our team members safe, focused, and attentive to what really counts when they're at work. Policies and guidelines are a great starting point as a way to teach and set expectations for our team, and that includes holding everyone, including ourselves, accountable. Your team is watching their peers and their leaders to learn what's right, what's acceptable, and what's not. Being consistent is key to having people accept the guideline or policy and, of course, the feedback that goes along with it. If you have a team, you need guidelines and policies to help everyone quickly get answers to their questions and make great decisions on their own. Employee handbooks are a natural resource that should be included in your onboarding process for any new team member and should also be set on a drumbeat for renewal and a chance for everyone to revisit the policy on an annual basis at a minimum. If you're wanting to create an employee handbook or some specific policies to add to yours, we highly recommend Nikki Ramirez of hranswers.org, who joined us on episode 47, where we talked about the ins and the outs of employee handbooks and how they can actually save you time as you're building your business and your team. So be sure to have a listen to episode 47 and reach out to Nikki for some help on crafting your employee handbook. And hey, before we start, let's clarify the difference between a guideline and a policy. Simply put, guidelines are general, non-mandatory recommendations. They're meant to provide suggested or recommended direction for decision-making. Policies are formalized statements that apply to a specific area or tasks. Most often, policies are mandatory. So employees who violate a policy may be disciplined up to and including termination, depending on the severity of the action taken by not following a policy. So here's an example. You may have a no smoking policy inside your restaurant so that you're compliant with your state or province's legislation. In addition, you may have a guideline for providing a smoking area outside away from pedestrian traffic and away from outside diners for staff or for guests who are attending an event hosted at your restaurant. And before we go much further into policies and guidelines, I want to point out that if you're listening in from the United States, you'll want to check out the National Labor Relations Board for specifics on workplace cell phone usage. But here's a quick note. They support team members in using their personal cell phones during breaks and other non-working times. But usually, it's not the breaks and the lunches use of cell phones that are a concern, and that's what we're going to dive into today. And if you're tuning in from Canada and live in the province of Ontario, like I do, you'll want to know that on the Ontario's Employment Standards Act is silent on the issue of cell phone use leaving it up to the employers to decide what is appropriate in their particular environment. (laughs) That's so Canadian. All right, let's talk cell phones. Here are a few common questions. Do I need a cell phone policy for my team? Yes. Can I take my team member's cell phone away from them? No. Okay, so those are the short answers. So let's dive in a bit deeper. First off, there's no one-size-fits-all solution for this. It's dependent on the role and the responsibilities that go along with that role. The culture that you're trying to create for your team and the experience you're wanting to create for your clients and your customers. And of course, any legislation that's been outlined by your state or province. 
But let's have a look at when it's appropriate for your team to have their phone in hand and when it's time to curb your team members' use of their phone with some real-life examples of how your cell phone policy is directly related to your social media policy. We'll walk through these by having a look at two specific types of businesses, retail and service-based. First up, here are some basic policy details that you need to put in place at your workplace. Cell phone usage that may distract a team member or cause a safety concern obviously requires stricter direction, such as having your team members keep their phones where they store their other personal belongings, such as in a locker or in the lunchroom or their desk, but not on their person. So this would be appropriate for anyone operating equipment or machinery or driving a vehicle to transport people or property, and whereby they're responsible to be in care of children. So think factory floor, landscaping crews, kitchen staff, hotel shuttle drivers, and daycare providers, and the like. Feeling some resistance towards this? Mm Mm-hmm. I feel you. You can, however, provide company cell phones and two-way communication devices, such as walkie-talkies and radios, that would be used for your team when they're at work. A company cell phone that would have a stripped-down version of connectivity can be very effective. So having an instant messaging tool like Slack or Voxer loaded up, but not having any social media apps or music or video apps available would eliminate distractions, and that's important when safety is a factor. And here's a few other things to note about a company-issued cell phone. Your team member does not have the expectation of privacy. So if there was a breach of security that required an actual investigation, the cell phone and text records may be confiscated. There would also be an expectation that they would not download or upload any inappropriate, illegal, or obscene material on that company's cell phone. And of course, using the corporate internet connectivity Well, that would be a breach of security and company values too. So here are some more basic components of your cell phone policy. And these would be for your personal cell phone. You would not permit your team members to play games on their cell phone during work hours unless they were on break or use their phones for any reason while driving a company vehicle or use their cell phone camera or microphone to record confidential information or team members' interactions and conversations. They would not be able to use their phones in areas where cell phone use is prohibited, like a laboratory or the factory floor. And of course, you wouldn't want those cell phones lying around in any food prep areas due to hygiene concerns. And of course, courtesy is expected when speaking on their phones within earshot of a colleague working nearby or in the break room. You know, when I was in my corporate career, we had a strict cell phone policy that included a no text and walking expectation. For real, you could be expected to be confronted if you were walking and texting. You were required to stop and step aside in the hallway to text or take a call. The intent of this was to train everyone that multitasking with your phone was actually a distraction and a potential safety hazard. I mean, come on, we've all had someone bump into us or something because their head was down while they were moving. Okay, let's keep the cell phone conversation going and dive into one of our types of businesses, starting with retail. So here are some basics. If your team member is serving a customer, a phone should not be in their hand. Really, you say? Well, are they showing them how to download an app or find your business page on Facebook or Instagram? Are they helping a customer find direction to your second location or a nearby destination showing them some goodwill? Or are they at the cash register ringing in sales and bagging up purchases? Sure, that makes it a little bit more clear, but what about if you have a retail store and you're in the habit of creating hype 
about your latest arrivals by posting team members modeling or demonstrating the latest products and trends. And let's say that you know your team members are connected with the exact ideal clients that you want to attract into your store. And let's say that your team members have a commission component to their pay. And finally, let's say that your team members know how to use filters, video, and all the latest smartphone technology way better than you do. So yes, it's in your best interest to loosen up the policies for cell phone usage with your team by providing open discussions and demonstrations about what type of posts are acceptable and who on the team has earned the right to be an extension of the brand by sharing information about your store to their network of connections. And then of course, how they too can gain your trust to do this, including possibly having access to the actual business page that belongs to your store, or even taking over your social media channels for the day or an event. These types of cell phone usage that are connected to your social media platforms can directly be linked to a team member whose role it is, is to be your social media manager for your business. Or you may decide to have everyone collectively create a post about the daily deal or today's epic new arrival or a contest right there all together in your morning huddle. This can include a daily interactive post plan that would be coordinated and set up to share on your business page. So think live demonstrations, video, polls, or Insta stories. It's best to be clear about whose phone is going to be used for these activities and who is leading the efforts. It's a fact. Young workers have the expectation of being connected. And there's definitely a vibe out there amongst business owners where they believe that having rigid phone use rules can actually cause unnecessary conflict. You may even have heard of business owners thinking that if everyone just embraced the idea that there's only a problem if you think there's a problem, there would be more appropriate use of cell phones at work. But this falls flat in the retail sector, who often get a bad rap because of the number of times customers are disappointed by staff being on their phones and not noticing that as a customer, you're looking to be waited upon. You're wanting some help. It reminds me of my days in manufacturing, whereby a standard coaching motto for productivity was, if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean. (laughs) That attitude towards being productive on the factory floor translates well into retail and service-based businesses. It all comes down to setting expectations, providing feedback, and including your policies as part of your employee handbook and that training during onboarding. So speaking of service-based businesses, let's have a look at a few scenarios for their cell phone usage. Here's a great example. The team coaches at Tada Gymnastics in Denver do a great job of using their cell phones at set points throughout their classes to feature kids doing incredible tricks and gaining confidence in little video snippets on Instagram. Of course, parents have agreed to this, and Erin McDonald, CEO of Tada Gymnastics, has set expectations with her team members about when and how to share those snippets as part of her marketing and outreach plan. And what kid doesn't want to see themselves in a live action clip? Erin was featured on episode 61 in an on-air coaching call. Check it out to hear her story And by the way, let's congratulate Erin on opening up her second location of Tada Gymnastics. We love seeing our biz chicks reach their goals. Here's another example. In a service-based business where your team members are being paid to be attentive to your clients, it's obvious that their personal cell phone would be used for things like checking their calendar, taking payments, or sending emails to their clients. Of course, you'd want to set the expectation 
that calls would go directly to voicemail while they were with the client, providing full attention to them. And speaker phones and answering calls in close proximity of a coworker, mm -hmm, that's usually frowned upon. So turning off phones or at least silencing them would be expected when your team is also attending a meeting. And as most businesses, there would be someone on the team who would be responsible for your social media strategy. Okay, let's move on to setting your social media policy. So for either a brick and mortar business like retail or a service-based business, including digital services, the most basic principle that your team needs to understand is that their job comes first and they need to apply the same common sense in the online world as would be expected in the physical one. Your policy should include the expectation that lends to the importance of confidentiality. Here's an example. They would be expected to not talk about financial information, sales trends, strategies, forecasts, any legal issues, future promotional activities, and they would not give out any personal information about customers or colleagues on any social media platform. And here's a common question I hear often. Should my team connect and accept friend requests on social media? In a nutshell, no. I get it. You and your team get to know your clients and customers well, and it can feel like friendship, especially if you are seeing your clients and customers in person, either at your shop, in your clinic, in your community, or during video conferencing calls. Many online businesses have private Facebook groups where they spend time each day connecting with those people. And some professions strictly prohibit any online friendships with clients due to privacy and security codes of contact. So be sure and check those out. So here's what I suggest for you instead. Follow your client's business pages in support of their efforts. That would be more acceptable. And here's why. If you accept their friend request or send them a friend request, each of you will be able to access the details to everyone's profiles and be able to see most, if not all, status updates. So ask yourself this, do you need to or want to have that level of knowledge? And how important is it for your sense of privacy? And what about upholding theirs? The other point to consider is accessibility. When you're friends with a client online, it will be easier for them to contact you at random hours, either during a Facebook messenger or a direct message on Instagram. They could even post a comment or a question on your wall. If they send you a direct message, either on Facebook or Instagram, it will show them that you've read their frantic 2 a.m. message, and they may wonder why you haven't responded to them yet. So if your brand historically has communicated with clients and customers online, then you've realized the time involved as you've built relationships, answered questions, and learned more about how you can serve them. So you personally can choose who you'd like to stay connected with on the various social media platforms, but I suggest you encourage your team members not to. It can put undue pressure on them. It's best to thoughtfully nurture those relationships through calls, emails, and of course, in person. A better option is to promote your team members using LinkedIn to share your business profile page posts and articles and stay in touch with your clients' business pages. LinkedIn is a social networking site designed specifically for the business community, and therefore, ensuring your team members have a presence there is absolutely worthwhile. To learn more about LinkedIn, check out Natalie's BizChicks podcast, episode 379 with Karen Yankovich, and episode 382 with Louise Brogan. And don't forget to scroll back here to episode 66 with Crystal Hicks. There certainly is a revival of interest in LinkedIn, and it would be beneficial to learn more about using that platform for your business. So check out the show notes for all of those episodes. And here's a tricky question. Should I be defending myself and my brand with bad online reviews or comments? 
First, let's ensure your team does not respond to any offensive or negative posts, reviews, or comments made by a customer. Instead, they should be making you or your social media manager aware of it so that a formal and thoughtful response can be shared. This point should be clearly outlined in your social media policy. I get it. As people, the first reaction when you receive a bad review or comment is to want to defend, correct, and fight back. In reality, your negative response to an already negative situation only brings more negativity to you and your brand. A few people are waiting for the drama to unfold. Others are speculating on the details, and even more people don't even care or notice what's going on. It's really more about hearing what your customer has to say and counting on other customers who have had a great experience with you to chime in and tell their counter story. By acknowledging their concern, apologizing that they feel this way with a concise reply, and then ensuring them that you'll investigate their claim. In most cases, that will calm everyone down. Some business owners feel the need to share about the incident on their own personal pages. This only amplifies the drama, as most often you have more people following you personally than what you would have on your business page. It's best to address the comment where the comment resides, and more often that's your business page or Yelp or some other forum used to rate and review. So what should you do? Well, it's best to reply to the comment with a short comment, thanking them for bringing this to your attention. I know the impulse will be to correct and add facts or your side of the story, but is it worth it to engage in an ongoing conversation online with this person? The goal is to shut down the chatter, not ramp it up. Molly McPherson of the Confident Communications podcast has a great episode on how to keep your cool when you've received a bad review. I highly recommend you pop over to her podcast and check out episode 27 for more insight. All right, let's close this out with setting your email policy. Here's why you need one. When your team members are using a company email address, They're acting as an extension of your brand. Communicating with your clients and customers on your behalf and representing themselves within their role. The brand identity is attached to all outgoing email communications. You know, you would think it would go without saying, but in reality, this needs to be documented and understood in your policy. Here it is. Team members would refrain from using any abusive, profane, or offensive language within their emails. So it's important that they present themselves in a professional manner and uphold your standards and philosophies. They will need to communicate in such a way that they continue to nurture the relationships you've built with your clients. Many business owners provide templates as training tools until the team member can demonstrate that they can represent the business using proper vocabulary, tone, and level of service. This is especially important for customer complaints and general requests or inquiries. The basics here are that you would want your team to return incoming email requests within 24 hours, and of course, not use their company email address to create, share, or or store any communications or content that would be considered inappropriate, harassing, or offensive in any way. This policy would also include expectations about using company internet for anything that is not of a legitimate business interest. Another expectation that you'd want to include is clients and customers, they really do appreciate an out-of-office auto-reply that includes a return date when necessary that includes an alternative team member's contact information too. So here's the thing. We've learned that creating a cell phone, social media, and email policy for your business doesn't have to be complicated but it does have to fit the culture you're wanting to create 
and the experience you're wanting to create for your customers. You'll want to consider the roles on your team that require your team member to use their cell phone, engage on social media, and be an extension of you and your brand online while communicating on emails. As CEO of your business, it's not unreasonable to have something in place to address this, and more often, it's expected. When we set guidelines, policies, and expectations, there is no point in throwing it all into an employee handbook and then turning a blind eye to anyone who's not meeting the expectation. Overlooking unmet expectations leads to a perception of favoritism and contradictions, ultimately leading to a lack of trust from your team and your customers. The more you role model the behavior you want to see in your business, the more your team will catch themselves and confront each other, lending to a more self-sufficient team and a workplace where people are focused on big goals, not being distracted by frustrations like these. So that's a wrap. I'm confident that you'll be able to ease your frustrations by introducing a cell phone, social media, and email policy that will help you and your team use those tools to be more effective at work. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'd love to hear about you, your business, and your team. So I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn, where I'm Shelly Warren 2. That's Shelly with an I and the number two. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Stacking Your Team. Please click subscribe in your podcast app so you never miss an episode. And head on over to bizchicks.com slash join to get access to the private Facebook group we host for women entrepreneurs. It is a virtual gathering space for the kindest, smartest, and most savvy women entrepreneurs around the globe who are scaling their businesses and stacking their teams. The group is free to join. And when you do, you get access to the complimentary downloads associated with both of our podcasts. We include the links in our weekly newsletter. Again, go to bizchicks.com slash join. That's B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com slash J-O-I-N to get access. And listen to us every Tuesday for a new episode of Stacking Your Team and Thursdays for a new episode of the Biz Chicks podcast. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, you are the leader your company needs and you are worthy of being CEO. Stay focused, Biz Chicks, and go stack your team. Oh, 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 oh